go. It looks like you're ready. Click here to oh, start streaming go. and then go live. Okay, I think we're live. Uh, where's Big Loz official? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Next three. Uh, well, people will tell us if we're live in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell us if we are live. We appear to be live. Yeah, we are. We're live. Excellent. How is everybody? How we know because we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's weird. Watching ourselves on a screen is a. Uh... Very good, son. <laughs> Lars, do you want to do the introductions? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. To... We've got some feedback. <laughs> this is going all wrong. One second, guys. We will get this sorted. Right. If we get that down, get that down. So. And just have it on here. No, no, no. You don't want it on there because that's. Oh no, that's the one we don't want. Yeah. Well, people will tell us if we're live in a second. <laughs> 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 Blame Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that sound coming That's from coming from the answer? Facebook. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Oh, you've, you've got a YouTube page up. You need to get rid of it. Which one? <laughs> you've got a, that, that one there. Yeah, this one, you've got to get rid of it. There we go. Right. <laughs> Is everyone still with us? Ooh, I, think, I think we're good. Good. Dale, are you here? I'm here. Oh, thank Excellent. God. <laughs> right. We are getting somewhere now. Right. Loz, please introduce everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got to get the, What have you done with the screen, Lizzie? We've got to sort that out. Use her on my screen. Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Go back up to Zoom. Sorry, guys. We we will sort this ASAP. Because <laughs> we can't I can't believe I can't believe I'm the one trying to sort this. What's right. going on? Go to Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Close that. <laughs> I never claimed to be a technical person, Lazo. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Right. So hopefully right. Yes, it yes. looks okay. Now. It does look okay now. Right. Do right, guys. Introductions. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. As you can see, we were just having a little sweat there. Liz is <laughs> sorted. No. You're supposed to be the technical one. I'm very stressed. We apologise to our guests for that. You know, Liz is supposed to be running this smoothly and, and we're messing it up. But let me introduce the guys that we have on today. We've got Dan Hipkiss and Dale McPherson, two of the absolute best coaches on the planet right now. These two guys have, I believe, pretty much half of the field competing at Britain's Strongest Man. Uh, we have yeah. the coach to World's Strongest Man and the current Europe's Strongest Man. Yep. It's um, an impressive field of people we have on tonight. Yes, I am here purely for the technical side. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gone well. Thanks. <laughs> it's gone really well. I'm here to moderate. <laughs> Anyway, we can get started. I hope everyone is good and has had a, a brilliant weekend. Guys, you both have, is it two each competing this? Uh, well, next weekend, is it? not next week, the weekend after. Britain's Strongest Man. It's going to be an amazing show. Yeah, I've got um, Tom and Luke, are my my two, um, which is... Not bad. It's brilliant and terrible at the same time. Really. <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not a bad, it's not a bad little... Um top trumps card to have them to is it you've definitely got the right. shiny stickers like i'm not gonna lie <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> um yeah so obviously i've got um andy black and uh des des in obviously uh, des replaced gav um explained earlier on in the week obviously you guys i uh, kept you updated right from the beginning um but he just needed a rest big gav just plain and simple he needed a rest body's burnt out time to relax so des from second at wales he stepped up against andy who's basically the best up and couple Strong man, especially in the UK right now, and possibly in the world. And like you yeah. say, Loz, I've got the world's strongest novice to look after. Well, and Andy's just been amazing this year. His his performances just seem to be getting better and better. Um, I think all of us have been just blown away by what he's been capable of and what he's done in such a short period of time. Yeah, he's. Um... He's one of those guys, I give you an example, he's not just 200 kilo, he's walked around at 200 kilo pretty much most of his adult life. So 
it's not something that he's not used to. Do you know what I mean? He isn't a guy who's went from 100 kilo to 200 kilo and just started lifting weights. But yeah. he has only started lifting weights nearly like just over two years ago. So what he's done in the first few years of competing in strongman's nothing short of outrageous. And um, I've thought I've already we're very very confident that we'll get a top five at Britain's with Andy. Um, obviously the overhead's still about a year or so behind because it's just a lack of gym time. Do you know what I mean? I was speaking to um, speaking to you about it, Laws in Manchester. I was speaking to Terry about it the other day. He just needs more gym time to get more hypertrophy, more muscle in there. Just general, just build some tissue and build some strength. Apart from that, his strongman game is pretty strong. Yeah, well, well, he's, he's a great his, athlete. His events are awesome. The, you know, the way he lifts Atlas stones, his grip, his just ability to move with weight. Mm. He's just got that natural. <laughs> he's just naturally gifted. When you talk about genetics for doing this sport. He, he's gifted and there's no other word for it. And I think, like you say, another year or two, he's going to be problem for absolutely everyone. Yeah, yeah. we're very, um, like for example, people like me and like yourself and Dan, we all know we don't blow smoke to anyone, you know what I mean? Um, but this is why it's very important for people like Andy, because he's a very grounded guy anyways, you know, he's a very down to earth kind of man. And he wouldn't appreciate some of that. So when you're working with the right guys, you've got the right people around you, it's very important that you go, right, Andy, your overhead is um, diabolical at the moment. From where it needs to be, you'll go, I pal, I know, but it's better than what it was six months ago, wasn't it? I'll go, yes, it is. That's the attitude to have, mate. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just taking time and working up slowly. But it's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to see where it leads us in the future. But we're saying top five of Britain this year is what I'm thinking. He's definitely got a chance. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I think, well, we'll talk about all the guys competing because there's 10 guys competing uh, at Britain's this year. I think it's a shame they haven't got a few extra. It would be nice to see maybe 12 guys competing just to give a yeah. few new faces. Yeah. But um, let's start off with the, the two new faces. We've got a guy called Shane Flowers, who's done exceptionally well uh, in, in a few shows this year. He's come from powerlifting. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had the chance to see much of him. Yeah, yeah well... Me and Dan were at the Englands, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting because that Englands wasn't sort of the same calibre as Englands, if that because of the joys of British strongman. There's about of 50 of them. Um, but he shone above that field. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of hard to judge quite where he sits. You know, it's... He was too good for that show. Like he was the only person to do the frame, the only person to do the yoke. I think, um, sort of really solid all the way through. Um, but it's hard to tell how good someone is if they're not competing against anyone as much. Yeah, the awkward part about that show is was when Paul was just stood there in the crowd, wasn't it? Yeah. And I remember me and Dan just looking at Paul going. This is really awkward because there's England's strongest man and there's England's strongest man, but we don't know where to put ourselves. We don't know what to say. <laughs> I just want to see a boxing match to solve it. It seems to be the way with uh, strong man at the moment. I remember Shane from, I remember coming across him a couple of years ago and he was pulling like 420 deadlifts, 400 kilo, 420 deadlifts. Yeah. He's known as pretty much like a deadlift guy. And then I seen him do some farmer's walks maybe a year ago and he'd done like one. 81, 90 each hand or something. It was something. I know he's got really, really good grip. Crazy grip. That yeah, frame he, he, was that frame. hideous. Yeah. Like, there were some good guys there and they, you know, they weren't getting, one guy went backwards. Like, yeah. it, it was a horrific frame. Like, super wide, super low. Super heavy. Yeah. Like, have one of those, but they had all those boxes. Yeah. And he was the only one who, sort of ran with it. Well, his yeah. brother had a good bump as well. Mitch did, yeah, as well. But I think I think this is going to be very interesting to see where he is on a national level. Yeah. Because obviously he's very, very inexperienced. And like that's that's not his fault. He just hasn't competed. But he's basically went, oh wow, you're England's strongest man to oh here you go. Here's Tom Luke Hicksy and Bishop to play with. It's a it's a real big jump up, isn't it? Yeah, it's but massive. From speaking to him personally and meeting him in real life. I don't think he's scared of it or terrified of it. He's competitive, you know, and he's there to give his best shot. And I really respect that about him. 
yeah, you can't you can't take that away from any like he was at the Arnold um last weekend and that was his first time at a giant show. And you could tell he was like, This is unreal. Like he wants to be there. I think yeah. everyone well, I've never been in the position, but it seems that everyone's first giant show is quite quite a big deal. So if he can deal with that as an athlete, he's he's got good good potential to put in a good performance. Yes, totally. absolutely. I, I think um, like like for all of us as athletes, you need that little bit of just experience time mm. where you go to these shows and you just go with the intention of learning. And I think the both him and um, Desmond, to be honest, are going to be in a position of. There's no pressure on either of them. They they don't need to go there thinking, you know, you know, it's, it's great to go there thinking you're going to win. But the reality is, yeah, they would need a miracle to win. I'm totally yeah. right. It's, yeah, it's going totally. to be learning what it's like coping with a fast paced show like Giants Live and having thousands of people watching you because you're not used to, to these experiences as well. Having yeah. that pressure of having to do things on a time frame. It's it, it's very different to, to stepping up from that you know, national scene that you're competing against or, or in front of a few people, suddenly you're on a yeah. big stage. The, the the pressure is very, very different. Of yeah. course it is. I remember at, um, in Glasgow, I'll give you a massive example. Um, Andy had an instance where he just finished log and it within seven minutes of him finishing log, getting to the changing room, getting his deadlift suit, getting changed, one warm-up, he was straight back out and it was just under 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like things like that, he just said at the end, he went, I can't, I can't explain to you what just happened in the past 10 minutes there. He says like, I wasn't ready, but I had to be ready. Does that make sense? And I was like, mate, I said, this is, this is like, where well, a lot of the guys tell us this is the learning curve. You know what I mean? Because I've only been, this is my like first full year on the giant scene as a coach. So even I'm learning the guys. So like I've got to implement that into the training, right? Your rest periods have to be A, B, C, D. It just can't be just like, right, let's do a set. Let's fucking have a, have a drink and have a chat with the lads. And it's just the base has got to switch off yeah. and go for it. You know what I mean? And it's not just the, the athletes who go through the coaches with them as well. Like, you know yourself where you stood there going, get, get your stuff on. What are you shouting at me for? Get, get your stuff on. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember that giant slive where Andy's first giant slive, um, you were trying to get him ready to do the deadlift and you're really excited. And, and I'm sat there watching and he he takes it quite, he's a relaxed dude. He, yeah. he takes in his stride. He really does. And he's like, calm down, Dale. And yeah, I, was, I was, I was, calm down, babes. yeah, calm down, babes. <laughs> and I was just thinking, he's actually got this perfect attitude for these type of situations because yeah, of the experience I've got of being of a giant slide. I knew he still had 40, you know, 30 or 40 minutes before he's going to lift. Yeah. But I know what he's like. The first, it was your first kind of time at those events as the yeah. as a coach. Whereas I guess Dan's got that experience now. You've been to a couple of World's Strongest Man shows. You, you kind of obviously have been to the Giants live shows as well. Is it weird as a coach? You, you know, your athlete, athletes are learning, but but as coaches, we're learning all the time as well. Yeah, yeah. I've been um, like really fortunate to end up where I am as a coach with the guys I'm with. And I think because of that, I put a lot of effort into getting to know the crew at Giants or at any competition. I've put myself in between the showrunners and Tom and Luke. So all the information that Tom and Luke needs goes to me because otherwise what we found at other shows is I'll go how long and they're like, oh, we told them they've got five minutes, three minutes ago. I'm like, but they're not going to remember that. Like, like they're knackered. Tom at Glasgow asked me where his deadlift straps were whilst he was holding them. <laughs> like, like, the shows are, are brutal. So I think people sort of think that coaching is a bit of a jolly, but I've not watched the Giants live show before. Like, I've never sat and watched the Giants live totally show. I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, I've had a few people say, oh, but it must be great when you're there. I go, no, it's not great. All you do is sweat and run about after everyone. I said, <laughs> hey, you're all lads there, but if one of the guys in the change room wants something and you're the only person there, they ask you, you're not going to say no, are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you see some poor Canadian bloke who doesn't have a clue where he is, he's like, 
can you help me get this? Can you can you get me some food? I'm really hungry. And you're like, I tell you what, when when you're there, Dale, you you do absolutely help everyone. It's, it's great to see. And I know I the people athletes. look at me like a little umpa lumpa and they're like, oh, he looks like a nice person. Let's just get him <laughs> to be on my back or something. And I'm like, fucking hell, I'm worth more than this. <laughs> you're not. Comments because they're building up. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you guys have questions for for me or Liz or Dale or Dan, please feel free to to ask. Liz is going to keep an eye on the questions. There's a little bit of a backlog. So, Kathleen, um, a question for you, Dan. What are you doing to get Tom more consistent? Um, I mean, this year's shown that he's fairly consistent. He is performing well in everything. Glasgow, he made a mistake on log. Uh, not on log. He got a world record on that. Um, on stones. But as I've said to people, like the Formula One's just been on today. If you're at the limit of performance, sometimes you fall off. And Tom's broken a stone record every time he's done it. So at some point, you know, he's getting faster and faster. There's just going to be a little slip. His consistency, I mean, it, at Christmas, you'll see that's why he won Worlds. Like, if he didn't yeah. win an event, he was in the top three. I think a lot of people jumping off the bandwagon extremely fast, if you ask me, on that situation. I think yeah. a lot of people are very, very fast to judge. Someone said something to me the other day about Tom. I can't remember yeah. the guy's name. And I was like, all oh, right, you must have his phone number, do you? You, you, must, <laughs> you must speak to the, the different person that I know at the moment because... <laughs> I don't yeah. have a clue what you're going on about. Tom's at the end of the day, gone, right, it's like, these it's guys not. compete at the highest level possible. And if, if we're all human and mistakes sometimes do happen, what, Loz, how many times have you made a mistake in a competition? Loads of times. <laughs> Bloody hell, I was out in Dubai last week and I blacked out unconscious because I was too hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny I mean? as it's well, like people don't yeah. realise, like, it's, it's, it's very easy to be good in the gym. Oh, that's, yeah. that's not hard. <laughs> it's good. All over the world competing. Well, I'm the world's strongest man in my gym. I'm amazing. You know, I, I remember doing a competition. It was out in, I think it was in Abu Dhabi. And this guy was a pretty good, he was a good athlete. Um, and he came second or third to me on the farmer's walk. And he straight away said, oh, but in, in training, I did better than that. I, my time would have beat you in training. And I just turned to him and said, yeah, but we're not in training today. You've got to do it on the day. And he, he couldn't get into his head that, you know, he didn't do as well as he did in training. Whereas, you know, he, he and he didn't, you know, he didn't even think the fact that maybe I could have done better in training as well. You yeah. know, it was just, oh, I, I didn't hit what I did. But there's so many factors that come into play when you, yeah. when you compete, especially when you start competing abroad or, or against yeah. the best in the world or with different equipment. And, you the know, equipment's the hard thing, you know. It's like um, in, in the gym, for example, if I've trained on my log week in, week out, I know that log up to an absolute T. Go over to my last competition and it's a 140 solid empty metal log. And I'm like, wow, cleaning this feels like a ton of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's just so different. But the more you do it, the more you get used to it and you, you embrace it. It doesn't scare you anymore after a while, does it? You got some more questions? Lots of questions. Dan, can you just reassure people that you are growing your mullets? <laughs> it, it's on the way. I've, the problem with growing a mullet Show is us. at some point you have to there commit to cutting there a load go. of hair off. There you go. So. It's coming, everyone. Do not it'll, forget. It'll grow out by Brits and by worlds I'll have I'll have uh, oh, some frosted mullet. tips and get the pit frosted vipers tits. on. Frosted tips. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> He's going to go for the Tiger King. <laughs> Question for Dale. Um, how's Andy still going as he's done like every recent show? How's because he Andy is a excitable young man who doesn't really care. Now, nah, his recovery is on point. He's eating well. We've, I'll be honest with you, the past two months, we haven't really trained that hard because we haven't had really much time to train hard. Yeah. There have been pumpy sessions here, some speed sessions there. And I'll be honest with you, it's it's extremely difficult to get stronger during competition season. The whole point of it is to maintain and don't get injured and recovery. That's the key to it. And a similar question, um, do Gav and Andy have access, like good access to recovery in the same way that the Stoltmans do with their hot and cold therapy? No, um, Andy lays in his bath and puts ice in it and Gav goes to the local riverway and it's full of um, shopping trolleys. So, no, not really, but it's something we're trying to work on. But trying to get a bath to fit them to is extremely difficult. 
<laughs> yeah, good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few more. Bear with me. Loz has just been messing with my phone and now um, what's up with Tom? Okay, so there was a question here um, uh, for you, uh, Dan. Someone said, um, Michael asked, maybe Dan can clear up the Arnold's controversy because they felt that the Stoltman's video didn't answer why the competition was used as a training session. Sorry to... <laughs> in essence there's well. been more there's been over a year's worth of competitions in three months and oh. the arnold we one didn't know if they were going to do it at all and then once the decision was made to do it we made the decision that winning britain's strongest man for both guys is the priority so if they felt any niggle, any tiredness, anything that could affect Brits, then they've just got to pull out. Like, it's a fairly hard decision to make, but... They trust you, though, Dan. Yeah, that's the call we made beforehand. But to be honest, we didn't expect Saturday to go how it went. And, you know, Tom messaged me and said, like, oh, we're on Myomaster, to come and see us. And... There were fights at the back of the queues for them. It was absolutely like, mental. Yeah, and their talk was, can't even say standing room only, because you weren't allowed to stand up anymore, because people were pushed against fire doors. And, you know, they ended up, um, is it Manuel, the guy who was running the show, like the Arnold, came up and said, like, you're not allowed to walk around this arena anymore because you're ruining the expo. Like, that's the level it got to. They had to have security. I walked up to Tom and got a seven-foot guy's hand in my chest who was, they managed to find a security guard bigger than Tom. And, you know, it was, realistically, for someone on the spectrum, having 20,000 people aggressively trying to get photos with you, they just, they were knackered. Like, we thought, Go to the Giants Five Stand. Go to my master. Do a talk. No stress, but you know they got three feet into the building and there was a queue half the length of the hall. I can certainly vouch for for. I was I was shocked at how popular the strongman was because yeah. you know we've been to expos before, and it's always the bodybuilders that are the most popular or sort or sort of celebrity type you know yeah. influencers. influencers. Mm -hmm. um, but this this time, I'd say the strong men in general were the stars of the show. Unbelievable! And literally, you know, the, the cues for for us were were, were crazy. I, I literally walked in through the door, and I was getting mobbed. And you know, the Stoltmans right now are pretty much the hottest kind of you know athletes that people want to see. They're 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 mm -hmm. kind of you know the, yeah. the cream of the crop. Stoltmans are strong men at the moment. Yeah, and I guess it's a learning curve. Maybe next year, if they know they're going to do that, they decide. Right, we're going to go there. We're going to meet the fans. We're going to focus on that. We don't do the comp. Yeah, because a hundred percent. Can't switch on. You can't focus. You can't eat. You can't get hydrated. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 my, my, I'm, I'm supposed to be on a diet right now. That went out the window. <laughs> because yeah, I literally couldn't eat, and then it was getting Donuts. to the point where I just had to sit down, like, take a bite. It was, it was brutal. Yeah, it was. Um, I walked free out. Workout. <laughs> free workout. I walked, <laughs> I walked out the back of the arm wrestling arena. And there was a wall of people, and I just saw you two. And I was like, hi, I'm <laughs> leaving. <laughs> when I got there, Ben Joyce, um, who's the scorer for Giants Live and various other comps, I saw him when it was quiet, and he was like, if it gets too much to you today, come over the barrier, and you can sit. I was like, what are you on about? Yeah. Like, why, like, why would it get too much? And it was taking me 40 minutes to walk like from one stall to back to the strongman because people were stopping me. And I'm like, I'm very much no one. And this, I was like, after four hours, I was like, Ben, can I come and sit down in the dark? <laughs> so for like Tom and Luke, it must have been just so overwhelming to be a part of and then to have to try and compete. I think it's, it's definitely like a learning curve. I can see why people thought maybe they shouldn't have competed. Because yeah. we do need to give new athletes the opportunity. It's important. 
especially if, if you're not going to go there and commit 100% to, to a competition. But maybe that's, a, that's something for next year. Now we sort of seem, well, in that situation, they know they're going to be that popular. They know they're going to be stood up for, for ages. They're not going to be able to eat right. Yeah, That's not the comp for them to focus on. Yeah. Obviously, we, we, we knew they want to focus on Britons anyway. Uh, and or, they've had, I mean, what's yeah. the, Luke's won the last two shows he did before that. So. He's doing all right. <laughs> He's, but, yeah. um, you know, the option was don't do the expo or don't do the comp. Yeah. And realistically, we know next year that's what the option is. But they could have gone to, bod like when Body Power was on, they could have gone to that and put in a good show because they don't walk around in their pants. Well, Luke does. But they don't walk around in their pants all the time. Like, they're not <laughs> going to get mobbed at Body Power. But the Arnold, like, I think realistically, we just cocked up a bit. We thought they could do so much. And I think it's a good sign that um, maybe it was cock up because it just shows the popularity of Strongman growing. Yeah. Oh, that, many, that many fans coming to, to see the guys is, is awesome. Watching the log and deadlift and you couldn't get near the stage. And these, like, for the women on, uh, I've seen clips of the women on the Friday. I got there on Saturday for like the under 80 guys who, you know, normally don't get a look in publicly. And, you know, there's a big crowd for, strong man just seeing people lift stuff i think sometimes it's nice for for the fans to see the athletes but we, we it's impossible for the athletes to compete at the hardest all the time so maybe yeah. for next year if giants live want the guys at every show maybe they do what me and terry do turn up to a couple that are just, you're just there for meet and greets and, and yeah and meet your fans and, and to be a face because you know they're talking of, of maybe even more shows next year yeah the way they can they can pick for every single one I think because of social media as well, long are the days gone where you feel that you have to do every show. Yeah. I think yeah. when, you know, eight to 10 years ago, if you weren't at a competition, you weren't being talked about at all, but social media really helps keep the guys in the spotlight now in a very different way. So yeah. I think um, guys can be a bit more choosy now. Yeah. I, 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 you know, even when you look at the promoters, the promoters probably feel like we've got to have them competing. Yeah. The reality is we don't. No, it, you know, there will still be sellout shows. Yeah, but you still yeah. go there, guys, and still do appearances at shows without actually competing as well. Yeah. It's not necessarily super important. So I remember, Dan, you were saying it about Gav. He's still going to Britons and stuff. He's still kicking about. People will still be happy to see him, you know what I mean? Even if he isn't competing. Yeah. I do remember when I was competing, thinking I've got, especially on my way up, I was like, oh, I've got to be seen. I've got to be kind of competing. And it wasn't until I got a few injuries and realised, well, you know, there's always another competition. You know, there's always chances to, to come. Yeah, and, yeah, and I mean, it's always, you know, if 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 you if if you're such a big name that they want you there, go there, do the 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 kind of you know meet the fans. You know, both of them are great at that as well. Yeah, they're, you know, they're they're happy to to be stood there all day long, and it's good to see because with more fans watching, it, it's better for everyone. Yeah, but I think I, they got I just think told got off a, for it after they dropped out yeah. because they went out into the crowd to take some photos and they're like, yeah, we need you to move because the whole audience is now stood in the aisles trying to get photos with you. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to get food and... Um, oh, that's impossible. Loz, we were just stood hiding behind the Giants live stand and suddenly a long queue formed for him and um, <laughs> I had to leave you there didn't I and you kept getting moved because you I get, were near the a... security kept like I literally was I wasn't like on a stand or anything I was just you walking just... around and we were trying we we're going to try and get some food <laughs> and I just kept getting stopped and then this huge queue formed but I was next to a, a fire exit and the security were coming trying to move us I was like what do you want me to do? So they were slowly trying to move me. So this whole crowd would come away from the <laughs> shuffling <across>. exit. <laughs> and you, had, you, you just went and got me some food, which, and I just stood there, you know, meeting everyone <laughs> until you came back. Very good at queuing, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Our ability to form a queue is uncanny. Um, does anyone have any funny stories from behind the scenes at strongman competitions? Oh, none that are suitable for the public. <laughs> that's that's the thing is, <laughs> are they suitable to tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on quickly. <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you a good one if you want to. If you want one oh, good one, I'll give you oh, one. Oh, no. Go on, Dale. Dale's always got a story. <laughs> Let me go and shut my kitchen door one minute. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like it could be juicy. This is no, it was at the Arnold, Arnold's Australia, it was. Uh, no, Arnold's Europe, right? And I'd just come seconds and I was, I just had my little 
tracksuit on and I had a bit, I had a, my bag pack. So I thought I'll have a beer on the way home. I thought it'd be all right. This bear in mind, I didn't have a clue where I was. It managed to go from one, two, three, four, five to being on a stag do with a bunch of guys from Norwich who were all dressed as Cristiano Ronaldo. I found a bag of crystal meth and give it to someone. Nearly got ran over and I got in about four o'clock in the morning and I had to leave for half past four and grab all my stuff. And I left half of it talking at the airport. <laughs> That's strong, man. Yeah. <laughs> my, think... first, my first ever international. There was, was, it, was it Belarus? I think it was, it was, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was some Eastern European country. It was Ukraine? No, it wasn't Ukraine. Oh. Um, it, it was an Eastern European country. It wasn't Ukraine. Poland. Uh, no, it wasn't Poland. It was okay. either Belarus or... Like stuff up. Um, was, <laughs> and I was doing a team comp. And I've, I, I was actually the only English-speaking athlete. They were all kind of Russian-speaking. So I thought, I'm at my first comp. You know, I've got to go out with the lads after and kind of, you know, you've you got to kind of show your face. And I went drinking with, with all these Russian guys. We were doing, you know, neat vodka, and I'm not really a drinker, <laughs> so I got no, absolutely, no. I got absolutely paralytic. To be honest, I was I was off my face, and I had to fly back the next morning. And I was with my ex at the time, and it was her birthday that I was flying back on. And I, I went on the plane. This woman sat next to me with the worst perfume you can imagine. So me with a hangover, feeling like crap, I ended up puking up next to this this poor old dear. Um, every time they brought the food tray along, I'd puke up, got into the car, or the, the, the ex picked me up. <laughs> you can see why she's the ex now. <laughs> um, she, she picked me up. Obviously, it's her birthday as well. So she's wanting to do something nice. And literally, I sort of puke up in the car, pass out, get home, go to bed. And I think like that's probably why she hated Strongman after that. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was, yeah, it was a stupid thing to do. You first big international you were like oh, i've just got to go and you know get my face seen with the promoters and stuff like that because these promoters of this show not like it's not like it is now where it's really professional the after party was the big deal of the competition no one cared how you did in the competition and you tried to if you wanted to get invited back you went out and partied but um yeah i was i was a lightweight man i couldn't i couldn't cope with it i'm glad it's kind of gone the way it has and an professional and i mean i've not had an alcoholic midnight. drink for a long time really so professional <laughs> professional yeah nah, it's professional on certain standards it's definitely still not professional professional at some standards definitely not i think um, funny, funny stories from strong men not funny no <laughs> I or think my, and... <laughs> my favorite one was um world's strongest man in manila and it was before the final and Martins was lay on a sofa backstage and his mum was there who's an amazing woman she's just so nice to be around and she walked backstage went, Martins do you need anything and he just went ice cream <laughs> and his mum walked off and got him an ice cream cone handed it to him and he went to lick it and the ice cream fell out onto the floor <laughs> And he just looked at his mum and he could have been six years old and she just pushed the ice cream off hers and gave it to him <laughs> and just sighed and walked off. And I was like, he's going to be world's strongest man soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yes, it is. Right. Have you got any more questions or can we talk about some of these athletes? Um, yeah, we will get back to that in just a second. Um, Dale. How has Andy suddenly got so good at stones or is it a natural ability? For Andy's always been very good at stones, if I'm honest with you. But we've t we've tweaked a few different things because I don't know if any of you have noticed, you two guys have probably noticed, actually when Loz beat Gav at the Albert Hall, the next show after was Manchester. And I had to do a lot of work with Gav on his technique on the stone, squeezing your forearms, fucking attacking the stone, blah, 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 whatever all the shite you go through. Um, and basically, Gav beat Andy on the stones at Manchester. And like, even I was stood like, what on earth just happened there? That shouldn't really happen. But what Andy was doing is he was being the old, right, I need to get it in the hole, secure it, make sure it goes in. And I remember getting him in the background afterwards and going, don't ever, ever do that again. And he went, well, what do you mean? I went, why are you just placing those stones into those little holes? You're 200 kilos, launch them, place them and go and show them zero respect what happens. Yeah, I know a few weeks later, 
he beats Trey Mitchell's on the Trey Mitchell. No, no, no. Did he beat Trey on the Atlas? Yeah, he, did beat he won the stones. Yeah, yeah he yeah. won the stones. Like, and do you know what that is? It's literally just getting rid of the nerves and just it's like learning to attack things, like we just said about the experience. Now he's done a few shows. Confidence as well. Yeah, yeah. confident, but he's also got respect for the guys, but not the respect where you underperform because you. You're like, idolizing. Got, we, we were watching some of the footage because yeah. obviously Liz has recorded a few of the shows he's been at now. Mm-hmm. And you can see the difference in his face from the first time he comes out to the way he is now. Yeah, you know, you can see that confidence has grown. He's not sort of hiding in himself now. Yeah. He believes he should be there and, and it's showing. And I love that about him. He's um he's got that um oh, you <laughs> got that little thing about him. Do you know, like I think everyone who's a good athlete. Special athletes always have something a little bit different about them. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Absolutely. He's got this little thing differently about him. And I've noticed that but from the first time I met him. And it's not just because he's because ex- he's extra special either. It's because he is literally a different breed of person. You know, he's like a weirdo. <laughs> Right, weirdo. <laughs> Strange guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about Andy. How do you reckon he can do at Britain's? Because I mean, we've we've bigged him up. He's done exceptionally well in a few shows already. This Can year, he... top five. Next year, podium. I want to see him at Worlds by two thousand and twenty-three, and I think that's doable. Absolutely. I think there's a good chance he goes in two thousand and twenty-two. I've already said this to Dan, but um, we, we, we're like being. Um, I'm thinking about going them being a threat. I think 2024, he can be a serious threat for the finals. So when you when you say top five, do you think he can be top four or is he aiming for that fifth place? I will be totally honest with you about this very, very second. Hixie, Tom, Luke and Bish, for me, are the four best strongmen in the UK. And people are getting close, but I still think they're the f- top four world-class guys that you're going to see fourth for Britain's. And that's no disrespect to any other athlete at the moment, even they're my own guys, you know. I just think they are the four class acts. And I think when you come come fifth, whoever comes fifth of Britain's this year, as long as everyone's healthy and fit, I think you're very respectable there. Absolutely. I I think Dan probably would agree with that as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, 100%. I think uh, the top four, (laughs) all being well, everyone healthy, everything goes to plan. I think the top four, a fairly well known. Yeah. Um I think people are sleeping on Paul Smith quite a bit. Um he's already came fifth at Brits a couple of years ago and he seems to have been working on a few of his weaknesses. Um Andy again, I think from a fan's point of view, fifth down is going to be almost more exciting than the top four at times. Great. Absolutely. Because that's back and forth. I, I see a few different battles for different positions. Like I can see a battle for first and second. I can see a battle for second and for third and fourth. I can see a really good battle between a few guys for fifth place. Yeah. You know, what? what how do you guys see it? I, I mean, my concern is if everything goes to plan, I, um, I think I might need Dale to hold my hand because <laughs> I've got a feeling it's going to come down to Tom and Luke in the stones um, for the top spot. So, I mean, that's going to be a brutal battle. We saw at Glasgow, you know, they're both capable of winning big shows. Um, Hixie looks amazing at the moment. He looks really strong. Bish, Bish is Bish. If he's well-rested, he's a world-class athlete. The thing is with Hixie and Bish, they always seem to turn up for Britons, don't they? Yeah, and I mean, then that, they turn up for Britons, they turn it up, you know. And like, but the thing is, I think Luke's on that much of a roll at the moment. Yeah, it's um and going for the three peak, you want yeah. three in a row. Hicks and Bishop are very, very, very fired up. I know Hicks is well rested and his training's going very well. I think this extra rest for Bish because he's a really busy year. And I, and I think he hasn't excelled this year at Giants because there's been that many shows and he's not just for Giants, but he's obviously been the show class and stuff. I think Bish has got a point to prove and he's a reigning champion, guys. You've got to remember that as well. Yeah. So I think he's going to come in hot and I think he's not very well known for his overhead, but I think out of his overhead, his single-arm dumbbells, his best overhead, if that makes any sense. 
And he's got so, every dumbbell that's ever been made. Yes. And I think, do you know what I think is a bit thing is with Bishop? He's like um he's like a slow burner, isn't he? he just gets everything done. But yeah. I will stand at this point now. If Tom turns up as Turbo Tom, no one's beating him. Yeah, this is this has been my it's brilliant as a coach, but it's also a bit nerve wracking because the Luke who was a Europe's strongest man. I don't think there's a human on the planet who could beat him other than Tom, who was at world's strongest man. If both of those athletes turn up, then... What about Europe's strongest man, Loz, though? It's... <laughs> I'd... it's not... let's... Now. let's not go there. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I'm I'd just the spoon Pete, Pete I, like it. it's fun. I think Pete Big Z wouldn't have beat Luke at Europe's. Luke at Europe's was an unbeatable athlete. Because he believed he'd won. He turned up walking away with the title. And when yeah, you do I remember that, I said he didn't have done when I first turned up. I went, Luke's in there. I just spoke to him. I don't, I don't you intend could, on you speaking You can see his him. attitude. He was there to win. Yeah, he yeah, was just sat in the corner, wasn't he? And like, I'm made some big like, changes. I normally have a little bit of a joke with the lads when I first get him. Like, now lads have gone. So I looked at him and I looked at Cushy and I went, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I just walked yeah. off. Went, he doesn't need me in his ear today. But I'll be honest with you. I think I think the top four is pretty nailed as long as everything goes to plan. There's no mistakes. But I think apart from that, what Loz was saying there, fifth down, the battle between the guys here, we've got like Andy, Paul, Shane, Des, Par. See, Par for me is the party spoiler on certain events. Par could podium. Dumbbell, Par is the guy who's going to spoil things. Do you remember we done it a few years ago on the Conan's wheel? Yeah. He just yeah. up. He's one first centimetre. He beat yeah. Tom by. Tom would have won Brits that year if uh, he did one more centimetre, which... It's madness, in it? And I think Par on the dumbbells and the deadlift is the guy who can start to ruin some points a little bit. Yeah. It... Can I quickly interrupt? Sorry, we had a super chat uh, from Blue Midget Panda. So thank you very much, Blue Midget. <laughs> and he said, there's a lot of sportsmanship, it seems, between the athletes. Is that true between the coaches? No, Definitely I can't stand it. each other. <laughs> all, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, here we've got an example of two, two of the best coaches in the country, and one of them coaches the other. Yeah, yeah so, who coaches who? Dan coaches I'm, me, because Dan's already said if he did strongman, he'd let me coach. Dan's uncoachable. <laughs> so does no one coach you, Dan? No, I'm a uniquely terrible athlete. <laughs> I climb, I race cars, I lift now and again, but I... People like I've tried to work with people, but I think I know better than them. And whether I do or not, I, that that's in my head. So I think one yeah. thing that's one thing between us three is we all kind of pick off each other and get ideas off each other, and you know oh, we, we chat yeah. and you know I'll listen to you guys and you know th- certain things I see you do or I listen. I think that that makes perfect sense. And yeah, one, of the, good, isn't it? one of the secrets to being a good coach is to be constantly looking to get better 100 like, percent. i think with that athlete. question as well i'll give you an example if someone comes to me and says um i'll give you a, a massive example here. if someone was getting trained by dan and we went oh i'd love to get trained by you and i'd go well if you can't get trained off him and he can't learn you anything trust me i can't help you yeah. and vice versa like if i'm fully booked and someone says oh should i get a coach i always recommend certain coaches go go to this guy go to this lady the fantastic. I find in our job, especially in our community, like that sort of stuff, great, you know. Like it'd be like someone coming to me learning to be a powerlifter. I'd go, go away. I don't know what I'm talking about. Go and see yep. A, B, C, D, because I wouldn't do something or help someone if I couldn't give them the best of my ability. And I think that's where in this community we're very good because we'd be like, but if you go and see such and such to be able to help you out, you know. And I think we're all pretty good like that. Yeah. No, yeah, it's... I think. As a coach, you have to want people to succeed. Yeah. And if you're not the person to do that, it's sort of irresponsible to just take people on because you want a bit more money. Like, yeah. Nah. I you, you did a podcast with Jordan Mulligan the other day, and we sat there. He's like, if someone said a million quid or Luke to win Worlds, so Luke to win Worlds, like it's not a question. Like, yeah, I want to see that happen. I want to see everyone I coach, you know, I want to see them at the peak of their performance. And if I won the lottery, I'd 
I'd still coach. I'd just send a load more of them to you and Dale instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then take a cut out of it because you're a businessman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's what I am. <laughs> I've got business nailed. <laughs> the mullet that really sells that. Um, <laughs> we've got a super chat. Thank you so much, Derek. His question is, do you think a reason why Strongman is so popular is due to the fact that a lot of the guys speak out about their mental health battles and it makes them more human? So do you think the humanisation of Strongman and the fact that they're so... started this all off? It was Tyson Fury, I think, who made a lot of people in the sport and world kind of like go, Fucking, like, God, if I do have a problem, I can't speak to it. Because when you see a guy there who is possibly the most... the toughest man on the planet can stand and say, I've cried and I'm not very well. Like for us guys who lift weights and it's seen as a bit of a macho sport, there's nothing, there's nothing tough about being mentally, mentally like um, when you've got problems, you know, you need to speak to people about it. And I think this kind of sport, there's plenty of people kicking about where you can go. Like I can have a joke with anyone any time of the day, but if someone comes to me and they had a genuine issue, I'd sit and talk to them. I think yeah. this spot is fantastic for that because we all know what we go through, you know? And, like, there's nothing wrong with having a little cry and asking someone for help. I'm, no, open. I'll, I'm open about, like, me and Dale have had chats and I've been like, mate, I'm I'm struggling a bit at the moment. And sometimes you just need to chat to your mate. And that's the thing with Strongman. I think... It switches off. It switches off from joking to kind of, like, is yeah. everything all right? You know, like, what, what, tell me what the problem is. And at the end of it, you end up laughing about it and then going, well, you know where I am if you need us, you soft what, you know, but, yeah. you know, we're all human, but we do need it. You do you do need a little arm around you every now and then, don't you? But I think the thing with Strongman is because it's, it's such a brutal sport, the athletes are just people. And you realise that at an elite level especially, I've seen guys at World's Strongest Man walk backstage and go, mate, you need these gloves or you need to put this tape on or you need to do this because you're competing against yourself and whoever's 100% is better is the one who wins. And because of that, because you're not directly battling against people in the same way as maybe other sports, you're just allowed to be human. And do you think um, post-competition like downers is a real thing because I get it really bad, you know. A hundred percent. When I've yeah. prepped for something for so long, or I've set my mind on something, and I don't know if you guys have get it where you've sort of reached something or done something. Afterwards, you feel very empty for a few days. It's yeah. One of the hardest things as an athlete is you're kind of so focused on the goal. Easy, isn't it? You're particularly, like, you know, for, for us, particularly the, the top open guys, when you're focused on world's strongest man, that's your ultimate goal. You go and compete at Worlds, and then afterwards, there is this just lull and emptiness. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a strange feeling. I mean, when I did my Achilles at World's Strongest Man, I was in a very bad place mentally. And it was, it was because I had nothing to focus on. I'd gone from, this is my life, I'm an athlete, I get up in the morning, I know I've got to eat, I've got to train, you know, to suddenly, well, what do I do now? And, and that was... Yeah extremely hard mentally on me uh, probably on I, you as well <laughs> yeah I can imagine for you Liz my goodness <laughs> it was worse for me <laughs> yeah, men, strong men are the biggest giant babies you've ever met <laughs> we're a bunch of babies it's a fact it's just it's a total investment though because even like from a coaching point of view after major comps like I'm a nightmare to be around for a bit because Every like waking moment in the build up to worlds, I have to have phone signal, I have to be in reach of the guys. Like, on the build up, like, I changed my sleep schedule for World's Strongest Man. Like, I went to sleep when they did. And- <laughs> World's Strongest Man was great, we were talking to you all the time, <laughs> yeah. But that's the th- like, but we just I- don't sleep. Well, this doesn't, no, <laughs> like that group chat, yeah. we were. You as much as world was a nightmare, that's... I really enjoyed that time in my life. It was, it was great. Was we but complained like, about the spreadsheet, but we all loved that spreadsheet. It, it was, was great. Oh, what's up with class? <laughs> you look back and you realise that we were talking for like 24 hours a day for the whole time. 
like there was the odd hour where it lulled, but and you think like once that was when over, Reddit Cush was involved in Bond. Reddit, when Reddit Cush- Cushy turns up, you know, Karen. Reddit Cushy and <laughs> Cockney Cushy are to be feared. Say Cush and Aid. <laughs> But like when Tom won, I cried in the garden for a while, and then was like, "Oh, well, what what do we do now?" Like, oh, that's over. Okay, like, just. <laughs> wonder what you did with your life before the world's strongest man. You're like, how did I fill my days? Like, you suddenly yeah. feel a bit lost, don't you? And then you go, "Oh, it's only a year, right?" <laughs> We've got fifteen shows to do before then. <laughs> Well, it's been a weird year, hasn't it? Because it pretty much started with World's Strongest Man, which is yeah. odd. Yeah. And um, then think, there's been show after show after show after show. I think yeah. people seem to have forgot there's been a massive global pandemic because, I, oh, why are all the shows so close together? It's like, no, remember it is, when mate. you weren't allowed to the shops? Mate, I had this conversation the other day with the guys and I got really wound up about it. I went, do you remember when they made us stand outside and make us train one or two people at a time outside in the snow in the car park. How dare they do that to us? I was getting really annoyed about it when I was thinking about it. Do you know it got a little bit cold the past week or so? I was thinking, yeah. what, like a year ago, we were sat outside and the police would come past while we literally stood there while you're doing a log press in a car park when you're with me looking at you. And I was getting really annoyed about it. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm so grateful now where we are, where we are, you know, like I can't yeah. explain it. Because hey, I wouldn't like what that. We love doing again. Oh, God, it's amazing, isn't it? What a year. What a year for Strongman. Yeah. This is. Britain's is next super chat sorry I don't mean to interrupt but it will disappear otherwise <laughs> and it's from Blue Midget Panda again so thank you so much thoughts on world strongest woman um why is it not shown as much so strong women in general as a sport we've spoken um, about this a lot the past yeah we? I mean realistically it's not shown as much because the tv company in charge of putting stuff on telly don't want to show it like that that's where it comes down to. It was shown a lot. I spent quite, a, I'm really lucky to spend a long time talking to Jock Reeve, who's Jamie Reeve's older brother and fairly well respected in the world with Dougie of getting British strongman and world's strongest man happening. And they, they fought tooth and nail for it to be on television. And the guys in charge from purely a TV point of view didn't want it. And that's why it's not shown. Like it should be. The strong women are phenomenal. Like in Britain, especially at the moment, we've got some of the strongest women in the world at every ever weight lived. class. Yeah. Ever lived in Britain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And You've got Andrea and Donna, they were possibly the two greatest strong women ever in the yeah. world. You know? Rhiannon's doing incredible things. There's, you know, a vast amount of under 63s who are incredible athletes, my partner being one of them, so that's always handy. Um, but it should be shown. But from a TV point of view, I don't like. I don't know. Find a petition, like lobby it. Like I don't know how you get it on. But yeah, I feel a bit sorry in some of the ladies, so because there's that much strength and depth out there. Fantastic, strong women. Like you'll know that when you go to like. The Arnold's America and all across them sort of places. You see some of like the the weight category ladies, and you see the Arnold's Pro and stuff, and you go, "Wow, what the? What am I watching yeah. here?" I mean, there was one year one of the ladies, Olga, she's a Ukrainian. She done something. Oh, she's like incredible. 30, she done some like thirty odd reps of a one ten stone and the last 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 woman stone off. Yeah, Olga, Olga's the, unbelievable. End of a competition, it was right. Well, and then you've got Andrea in between the events and Donna doing world records in between the events. And then, like, you see, like, UK Strongest Woman, which was on, which looked absolutely fantastic, by the way. And yep. then you've got the, the WOS, and then you've got the OSG and things like that. So all the comps are there. It, yeah. just... and Annabelle Chapman at um, oh, WUS was unbelievable. Oh, she, 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 she won the Ritz Ritz the day after. Blew back. And yeah. Then... yeah. Come on. Well, Rebecca, Ro- Rebecca Roberts as well from Wales. Yeah. She, she's she's exploded pretty... recently. Ever since yeah. she's yeah. kind of... Focus more on being athletic rather than big. She's really, really come on. Well, you know. They deserve to be seen. And agree. You know, I don't know. I honestly like. I wish I knew what the answer was, but you know, it's. Well, I, know it's I, think, I think I think things are improving. You know, if you yeah. if we look yeah. back ten years, well, even five years with the women's side of things, the there was a time I remember when I started strongman. 
I remember watching Britain's Strongest Woman and two athletes were in the field. Yeah. Just two athletes. Um, whereas now, on a weekly basis, you've got various different weight classes and, and female classes that are stacked, full of athletes. The, 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 the popularity has grown massively. You know, events like the event that happened in Wuss, uh, in, in Dubai a few weeks back, really yeah. good for the women. There's OSG coming up, which they've got the most prize money they've ever had for, for the women's class. It's like four so weeks away. So things it's... are improving. It's just slow. But it's slow on the men's side as well. You know, we're not yeah. where we want to be. Yeah. We need to keep, you know, voicing for, for, for these guys, get them seen more. They need to help themselves in that respect as well. That's something that athletes have to be, you know, aware of. Promoting yourself is just as important. You can't just expect promoters to do it for you. You've got to be seen yeah, yourself agree. and you've got to, you know, you've got to bring fans to the sport. Who Some remembers, people are a lot better at yeah, that than yeah. others. It remembers the days when uh, the Arnolds was on Eurosport and Strongman Champions League. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. Like, Strongman's, Strongman's took a bit of a kicking for a while and it's only just building back up. Like, the, like ESPN was broadcasting Strongman all the time. You could watch, um, oh, what was it before the SCL? Where they, I remember there was a competition in Hawaii that had like Sven Carlson, Pug, Grand Super, Prix. Super Series. Yeah, the Grand Super Prix, Prix, the Super Series, if yeah. it, like Hungary, everything. It was 2000, 2003. I think they did the last of the 2002 year and then the first of the 2003 year on one weekend in, in yeah. Hawaii. Because they had, was, um, a light sensor for the front hold or the crucifix the, the hold? Crucifix hold at the side, yeah. yeah. I remember the guys Sven Carlson their arms, but they keep, back they, and... they keep pressed up. <laughs> Is this when uh, Marius Pudinowski was doing about 7,000 yeah. shows a year? Yeah, yeah. just <laughs> constant competition. When I first got into Strongman, I used to watch all those DVDs over and over again. <laughs> yeah. So good. So so good. It's not on telly every weekend anymore. So mm. the sport has exploded in popularity and there's so many more participants, there's so many more competitions, but like the men's side, which traditionally has been the big draw, isn't on TV all the time. The women's side is incredible and it's not on TV. It's, I think UK's should be. I don't know. I don't know about that. I couldn't possibly tell you. But, you know, there's... It's close. I think in the next five years, you know, hopefully there are legitimately full-time professional strong women who don't have to have jobs, so it's not just sponsorship that's covering it. And from a strong man and new athlete point of view, like you say, you've got to it's it's wrestling, basically. You've got to put a show on and be invitable. Yeah couple of super chats um clint thank you so much he just said love 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 listening to you guys clint darden he's a good strong Ooh, man himself what a guy he um mind-blowing athlete like really amazing big fan of clint lives in cyprus doesn't he yeah he um he had some health issues a while ago and would go to hospital for fairly aggressive treatment and then go and train incredibly heavy uh, a similar time when people were moaning if the logs weren't the right colour. Oh, I, like... I remember watching Clint on um, Eurosport. Yeah, he was... Um, did he compete against Mike Burke a few times? I think he'll probably be able to answer. Yeah, let us know, Clint, <laughs> if you compete. Oh, I don't remember seeing him against Mike Burke, but I, I remember seeing him do a few shows on Eurosport and, you know... He's um he's got a great gym, home gym in, in Cyprus, and he's always offering people the chance to go over there. So yeah, we should, we what a guy. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all coming <laughs> on Monday. Like um, the in-betweeners. <laughs> yeah, um, Daniel Joshua wants to know if I'm okay. I am. I just have a resting bitch face. <laughs> That's just my face when I'm not talking. Are you okay, hon? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, hun. But also, we went to Ikea today with the kids, so oh. I am a bit knackered, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. Ikea is okay. evil. Yeah. yeah. Good meatballs, but... The money pit. Just kids awful. Eviler as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea with two kids wasn't fun. No, no, they enjoyed it, though. They enjoyed it. They I had didn't. a way of the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Midget Panda's back again. Thank you so much. If you were in charge, how would you give Strongman or World Strongest Man a platform? 
money no object object sort of thing so how would you give I guess the sport of strongman a platform if you were in charge and it was your job to promote strongman to the whole world get it on euro sport every weekend again (laughs) (laughs) really the answer damn right um basically it's pretty it's not simple because it's not it's like logistical whatever but like i'll give you an example you go to europe's you have a champion from a country in europe from across every single country there that would be like the ideal situation where you've got sweden strongest man norway strongest man and germany strongest man and that but then you have to start looking at things where you go there used to be a certain standard to be a professional still, you know? Yeah, because China's strongest man in, I want to say 2008. Was it 2000? When was Worlds in Shendu? It was, I, I, I had a Chinese guy in my group when I tore my quad in 2013. 13. 13 or Sanya, before, yeah. Yes, in Sanya. Yeah. Oh, and, Sanya. You know, this guy was China's strongest man and he was walking around world's strongest man with a, 300 kilo deadlift club top on yeah now there's nothing wrong with a 300 kilo deadlift at all but world's strongest man is not the place to walk around with that t-shirt on and i think some people are quite like i think it can be quite aggressive the way they approach this situation when like they need to do this you need to do this you need to do this and you're like right well it's not similar to that because strongman's still quite a small sport right and i do believe there needs to be opportunities for people to qualify for things so i'll give you an example to get to Britain's strongest man, you should have like a qualifier in Ireland, a qualifier in England, a qualifier in Wales, a qualifier in Scotland. That's fair. You know, I do get that. But you generally find professional shows all boil down to invites because you're good enough to compete at that standard. So it's not just as simple as I'm a money and go, let's put 5,000 shows on a year because it doesn't work like that. You need fit athletes. You need the right staff. It's all right having money to set up the shows, but how do you got the equipment and all the staff there to run the shows? You know, it's not that simple. I wish it was standardization a bit as well yeah. because if you look at like England's and UK's strongest man, the northern qualifier is going to be England's strongest man because it's really heavy, it's a brutal show, it's in a car park in the north. The equipment's brutal. sort of it's proper strongman, like it's handmade, medieval. Equipment. it's medieval yeah. equipment, and I think. For I can't remember how long, but the winner of England's has come from Northern's. And if they all did the same show and it was all the same weights, then no one's getting through because it's their mate's gym or the qualifier's a bit easier. Like standardizing will raise the level at that level. Yeah, yeah, totally understand. I totally understand. So didn't they used to do it years ago at Brits where they used to have a general qualifier to get Britain's strongest man? There was uh, the John Smith's uh, era of Britain's Strongest Man, where you could just rock up. The Daily Star Weekender. <laughs> I love the John Smith. The John Smith. Do you remember that? The Daily Star Weekender. When Jamie Reeves was competing. Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Capes used to run. Uh, what was Jeff Capes? He did like a. He had um, like a, the News of the World or something a like that. Builders <laughs> Cup. I worked on a site with a guy who had a strongman top on. I was like, you what like what what's this about? And he's like, oh, back in the day, Jeff Capes came round and did a Brickliff challenge on building sites and you got a t-shirt. And then I think you got invited to some comp. Like if you were the best in the country at this, you got an invite to something. So I've seen that. I've seen a few of the old videos of some of the, the UK strongest man shows and which uh, Jeff was involved with. It's um it's always good fun to go back and watch some of those. Yeah, pure strength is my favorite one. Pure strength is too. amazing. I just <laughs> love the they've given Jeff Capes and Jamie some money and gone, just do what you want, lads. <laughs> I've got all right, then I want That's an axe mental. and a log <laughs> and a bow where the bow shoots a thing that releases an eagle, which means you have to pick up an axe because, <laughs> of course, it does. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it, it, it would have been mental to compete in those shows, but I love watching them. <laughs> They're so good to watch. It's Me and so... Dan have always got this thing where we agree in it every time, and every time we get geeky about things, we always go back and go, Fortissimus is the best strongman show ever. Yeah, that's... If... I think it should be coming back soonish. Next hopefully. year. Next year. 
if anyone I coach gets an invite to that and turns it down, I will not coach them anymore. <laughs> don't let them turn it down, Dan. You have the power. You just don't. I have no. People seem to think I have power. <laughs> it's. I've got yeah, when no it comes control. To this, just stamp your feet as hard as possible. I'll just go. I can just go yourself. Out. Just take the invite for yourself. It's fine. <laughs> We're a little behind. Let's the super go. Chat. So fluffy feet. Thank you so much. I wanted to say Frank and Lars, we love you, brother. Thank you very much. There you go. Clint wanted to confirm that he did. He was on. Um, oh, I can't Euro remember Sport. what he said. Yes, he was on Eurosport, but he was before Mike Burke's era. Oh, okay. Levi, thank you for the super chat, Levi. If you had, if you four had to redesign World Strongest Man group stages and finals, how many groups, if any, would you have, and how many events in the groups and the final stages? Oi, oi. Um, I'd pick everyone out. Like I'd have the top. The guys are in the top 10, they would get their own little pile. So you'd pick two of them out. And then everyone else gets put put in like a FIFA and FA Cup draw. Everyone just gets picked out. There's your group, there's your group, there's your group, there's your group. Jobs are good. All right. And Dan? <laughs> Pretty much the same. I'd keep it how it is, but random groups. How many events? Uh, five events in the groups. And have an overhead, a moving event, a deadlift event. Draw them out a the hat. Because I, I don't think we're getting the world's strongest man yet. I think we're getting the world's best strongman still. But I think if it's total random events, the strongest man in the world will win. Because you've just got to be stronger than everyone. So do you think turn up and not know what the events are? Yeah. Like, you know there's going to be an overhead, but... But you don't know which one? Yeah, and you... Don't get to use that bit of kit. God, can you imagine the controversy that would say if you went, right, lads, we've got six of these events, but I'm not telling you what it is. You'd be like, well, oh, I'm going to melt. But then can you the imagine being in our person. job when that happens? Yeah, I'd love it as, as an athlete. I'd love it. As a coach, it's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Um... Everything's, everything's medleys all day. We'll do, we'll do an AMRAP on shoulders today. <laughs> Giant sets on deadlifts in New York. We'll just go mental. I'd um I'd get rid of Max Deadlift in World's Strongest Man for the next ten years as well. Great, right. because I can't watch people not pull five oh five anymore. Unless unless it's something with cheese or something, and it's on an eighty. Yeah, like a weird yes. deadlift. Yeah, because strongman strongman's cool. Like bring the cars back and deadlift cars yeah. for reps. See, fine. I, I, I I mean Dan, you you mentioned about standardization. I don't think we need standardization in strongman. I kind of like very different events at comps. I get it when you're talking about qualifiers and everyone oh, doing the same yeah. thing, but I like that you kind of, you know, you do a variation of events. You can have a truck pull, you can have a plane pull, you can have, yeah. you know, a tank pull or something, whatever Atlas it might be. Stone clean and press. Oh, oh, what? Just because Atlas Stone clean and press, just because he's freakishly <laughs> they did, good They at did it. that at Europe's last year, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I want, I want, I want, a, I want a wild card to one event. <laughs> <laughs> but I think standardization... Of, a, of qualifiers should be a thing because you shouldn't, there shouldn't be an easy path in. No. Or if there's an easy path, they should all be easy. And But in terms of the events, like it's overhead. It'll be some form of pressing. Like it'll be some form of deadlift, whether it's max, whether it's reps, whether it's cheese, whether it's a backlift, which Midgets. should come back. Because backlift was incredible. I want to see a backlift. I keep Me too. It. Anyway, you've got a few more super chats. Yes. Yeah. Bron Chopped. Thank you, Bron Chopped. This is a good one. What do you think of Mateus's return? He is the best at any moving event without question. So how does this change Tom and Luke's chances next year at World's Strongest Man? Um, I think you're fine. Lauren Charlie is the best at moving events. So don't say that to an Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Tom and Luke were first and second at worlds apparently because no one's seen it yet but <laughs> they were fairly far ahead of everyone else so he was the best at moving events and he was the best at you know he's coming back to a sport that's had two years to move on so I think the athlete he was is sort of irrelevant judging by Wuss he's an incredible athlete so I think judging him where he is now, he's a podium contender at World's Strongest Man. But 
there's a lot of was with him still. Whereas I think one thing is one thing is important. People, you know, going forward, yes, there's going to be some great battles, but you should never take away what someone's achieved. So yeah, Tom, Tom allegedly, should we? <laughs> Tom, Tom is the world's strongest man. This isn't, you know, this isn't my channel. I can do what I want. What? <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom, one world's strongest man, and no one should take anything away from that. No. He is the best strong man on that day in the world. He deserves you know what it is? The yeah, Kieliskowski question, right? Kieliskowski is an absolute freak of nature, but so are tens and twenty. I tell you, what excites me is that we, we've we really got a battle next year. Now, um, yeah. imagine this. Know, I, I actually think there's a good six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys that have a, cho- a shot of winning World's Strongest Man. Look at that. Luke, Tom, uh, Lissis is coming back, Mateus is coming back, Novikov, Evan Singleton seems to be on an absolute mission. He's storming at the, at the moment. And then you think you've still got Brian Shaw kicking about, you've still got Jeff, Jeff Caron kicking about, and then you've got Janasha kicking about. And like, Trey Mitchell. Trey yeah. Mitchell, Maxine Bobby Thompson. You know, like, and these aren't even, we haven't even touched everyone else yet. You know what I mean? And that's what it's yeah. like. The state of strongman is ridiculous right now, and it's what what makes it so exciting. And I think it's very hard to make any prediction on who will win World's Strongest Man. Oh, because yeah. Kieliskowski is absolutely amazing, and he's unbelievable. But like, I know he's like, well, he's predominantly known as being the big, the best mover. But and then you've also got to look at things in their own in their own right. And an athlete doesn't look at Kieliskowski and go. Right, well, I'm going to lose to him, so like it doesn't matter. I'll come second on the York. These guys are training week in, week out to beat each other. Yeah. So yeah. all it goes down to what, like Lozzie just said, there is who's going to be the best on the day. And there's that many guys at the moment who could just ruin everyone else's chances. It's like it's all up in the air. I think Strongman now is in the best place it's been in a very long time for how competitive it is. And I mean, yeah. years, and it's years. never, it's Possibly never, ever. ever been this competitive in depth. Agreed. We've had two guys dominating you've had three guys dominating you've had one guy dominating now you've got 20 guys who could win worlds yeah you know maybe like the right event realistically and... i'd probably say 10 that really could but you know on their yeah. day 20 yeah, or 30 blind no. circuit you've had novikov luke and evan who've been just fighting with each other all summer yeah. I mean, what's going to be really exciting, a couple of people I've seen asking as well, is we've got the Rogue Invitational coming up just after Britain's. Have we yeah. seen the events of this? Actually, is Bron it? Chopped, top five predictions for Rogue Thank you, Bron Chopped. Thank you, Bron So, yeah, <laughs> Rogue Invitational is going to be an amazing show because you have the return of Lysis. You have yeah. Kilioshkovsky going there. You, you actually have four World's Strongest Man winners competing in this show. I don't think that's ever happened before, to have four... World no, strong. maybe sure. it may have, but I can't. I can't think of it happening. I'd have to look into it. To be I fair, the time where that would have happened. No, it's because it's, we've had so many different winners. Over yeah, the last yeah. Five and then you've got Kieliszkowski, who's not one world strongest man, who's going to be competing there. He's still it's, pointed at world strongest yeah. man and world one world you know, strong. Imagine, world champion imagine if we that. return. If you had like Thor and Eddie returning as well. Yeah. Eddie, they're young enough to if they really me, to. if Eddie Hall returned to strongman now the whole sport would blow up even if he come back and he was shit I think if, he, Eddie, yeah, if, if, if Eddie and Thor came back Can you imagine that if yeah. they come back and met at the world world like the world open for example in Manchester or something and they had a 20,000 seat stadium that would sell out yeah, I'm not joking. yeah. I actually think more people would be interested in that than them boxing I agree yeah I would imagine them doing, doing, doing like a year's build up of them coming yeah. back to the strong man show. I'd just amazing. 400 for reps. Let's go. Like, I'd, wa- I'd watch that over them boxing. Like, yeah, I agree. 450 I, I, for reps I, I, would be good. I, I, I would love to see. It's never going to happen because no. they're both focused on other things. But could you imagine if they both said, right, let's have a year 505? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only time we're going to be thinking. I want to watch the deadlift now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think a interesting yeah. thing with Kielikowski is learning to win at that level seems to be a thing people struggle with. Like when Luke won his first show, it was Europe's, like his first Giants. And then Glasgow, he battled as if he didn't want a win taking away from him. Whereas Hicksy for a lot of years looked really good at Brits and then seemed to not know how to win 
and then the year he won, since then, any competition he's entered, you've gone, oh, oh, Hicksy could win this. I think... Hicksy's the strongest strongman in the world, stood still. Yeah, and he's really good at moving. Like, yeah, but I generally the... think Hicksy is the strongest strongman on earth. Like, yeah. if, you just, if you just went in the gym with Hicksy, he's the type of person where you just go, oh, God, do I have to train with him again? I have to tear, load all the plates up for him. Oh. I've got to take them off because then I've got to go. Sorry, but no, 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 that's fine. You bring give, us back on track. You were supposed to give top five predictions for Rogue Invitational. Sorry, we got carried away. Everyone, chop bless him. Is super chat again? Asking again. Right, um, <laughs> sorry, right. Martins, I'll go first. Mateus. I'll go first. So go back. Dan first. You go Good first. Night. Martins, Mateus, um, Novikov. Is Novikov competing? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tom and Luke. I think Is that in order. Pretty much, we've got Britain's strongest man in two weeks, and yeah. being realistic, I've got no idea what's going to happen at Brits. I, I, I've got, I've been watching um, Liz's training, and I think he's peaking perfectly. He looks real. Seeing him come back, it's being coaches is a really awkward position because we also all really love strongman. So there's part of me going. Lissis looks amazing. Oh, Mateusz is back. That's really good. And I've been saying you like, yours. Will you just piss off? Like, <laughs> <laughs> just don't bother. <laughs> but um, as a fan, it's strongman's incredible. Like the road's throw, heavy as well. I'm going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons. So I've just went over the events again there, right? And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to take Novikov for the win. I'm going to take Lissis for second. I'm going to take Kiliskowski for third, followed by Brian Shaw, then Jeff Cowan. Ooh. That's... But that's I think Shaw would get into that podium place, judging by the events I've just read. Yeah. The events are weird some interesting well. events. So there's some interesting events and some weird events. It's weird. The yeah. medley thing is so strange. Yoke yo, yo, yo into no. log lift. What shoes do you wear? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Because it's only a 160 log. Five to a elite heavyweight strongman log. If, is if it was me, I would focus on just my speed on my my yoke because well, yeah. 160 log for three reps, is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. They'll all. They all should. If yeah, if you can't do it, then there's a problem. Yeah, you know, if you don't do event. it, it's competition. You know, win that event. Rob Kearney's going to win that event. Oh. I disagree. I'm just saying it. I'm Depends saying which Rob Kearney. I'm not. I think Kiliszkowski or Novikov. I, I, I think one. I think Kiliszkowski or yeah, nail it. But I think Kiliszkowski has the ability to one motion a 160 log. Yeah, I don't, I don't think um, Rob Kearney can. But then look at looking at Luke's seems to have got got his stuff together with moving. I'm aware of your monetization and swearing, so. It's... Oh, mate, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Fine. But Luke's, you know, traditionally was bad at moving, and at Worlds he was really good and made a small mistake. Apparently, um, we at need Europe's, to stop apparently on here, don't we? <laughs> at, <laughs> at Europe's phenomenal at moving, like, and a one sixty log for Luke is it's sort of not worth pressing, like. He can one motion it. He can. It's a good job. Hicksy's not there. Like for that one, Hicksy's could be so good at that event. I tell you who would be amazing at that is I am Bibby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's imagine if he's he's thrown into that. He drops the yoke claw. Yeah, he gasses quick, but he's quick on the yoke though as well. I've seen him yeah. lift the yoke before. He he yeah. could be rapidly fast. On he'll, he'll go to worlds. He'll go to worlds next year. I don't no, think he was, will. I don't no, think he's fussed about going to worlds. Really. Yeah, I don't think he cares about I think going he to Worlds. He gets invited every year and just doesn't do it. Yeah, uh, he's a showman and a king now, <laughs> r- rather than a strongman. And he seems yeah, fairly yeah. open about that. Like, he will turn up and try and break records and do an event he wants to do. Because, <laughs> but Worlds, like, Worlds takes a year to get good for. And, He's very literally a king. Yeah. Like he's got a bit going on. <laughs> like 
he's got to pick and choose what he does. And I've got a lot, like a lot of time for Bibby. Um, but he's he's got his niche where he is. But seeing him at, where was it? Where there was a car walk. It was him versus, I want to say him versus Evan. London. Was Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. And London, mate. Bibby just flew. Like, Bibby is quick. Big man, he can shift. He, he, like, he's, was that? Yeah, he's fast. It was Manchester. He's genuinely. No, no, no. 2019. Um, oh, 2000, yes, sorry. Yeah, it was a couple of sorry, years ago. Was, yeah, getting yeah. confused. Good, strong he, man uh, nerding. In Manchester, he was rapid on the yoke and the um, frame. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's phenomenal at moving. But like Dale says, he he's not doing much after he's done that. No. Show us uh, another question. You didn't do, give a top five quickly. Oh, I'll save that for my prediction video. Okay. <laughs> fluffy feet. Thank you, fluffy feet. Do you think Brian wants to win again, or is he happy with just being Brian and having he his past wins? Definitely wants to win again. I think he wants to win. He wants to win. He's not. He does not turn up to anything just to compete. At all. There's a difference between wanting and, and being able to win. Yeah, uh, I, I, think I he wants I, to win. There's no question in my mind that he wants to win. Yeah, and he believes he can win. Yeah, yeah. It's I think whether he can actually goes, win is a different matter. I think when the self belief goes, it's time to stop. But I do generally believe Shaw still actually does believe he can still win world's strongest man. Shaw is still a world class athlete. He is. He is. He's proved it like not that long ago. He showed he is. But I think as we said uh, in your when we chatted after Worlds that. Tom, Luke, Mateus, Martins, all these guys at 100%. Uh, like it's, just, Shaw's it's getting harder 95%. every year. It's oh, getting yeah. harder and harder every single year. But it, it's, it's he's cool. still dangerous. Yeah, oh, he's he sure. can ruin a lot of people's day. Mm. But I don't think he can win Worlds, but I think he turns up there. He, he's going to win Worlds in his head, like... I think it's very difficult. Like Brian's in a very nice financial position. He's done extremely well. He's a four-time World's Strongest Man winner. It's hard to be as hungry as the guy that hasn't won and that yeah. doesn't have the money and doesn't have the kind of, you know, limelight and lifestyle of someone like Brian. You know, it's it's those guys with that hunger, they just want it that little bit more. Like yeah. the Evans of this world. Yeah, yep. Evans. Uh, you know something? For anyone who's watching this now, you know, he is one of the soundest people I've ever spent time with, you know. He comes across like this big, like, oh, look at me. I, honestly, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever ever come across. Just for, like, going out for food, spending journeys with him, spending time with him. He's a cracking bloke, you know. He's an entertainer. He's a, he's a wrestler. He That's... Is. He's Don't get me wrong, he's there to win, but he is a really nice dude, you know, and he's the type of person, if he did ever win something like that, I couldn't be anything but happy for him. Cool. You got another question, Lizzie? I do. Blue Midget Panda again, thank you so much. This is for all three of you, while I nip to the loo. <laughs> As coaches, what's the easiest, hardest, and most rewarding part of Strongman? Oh, seeing the world's strongest man trophy get hoisted up, probably the proudest moment of my life. Well, you um, never mentioned that once. It, the phone call, I got 20 seconds on the phone with Tom when he won. And this was on the way to get a trophy. And he just said, I did it, mate. I beat him. And even now I get goosebumps. And that's it. Like That's the most rewarding thing that's a single moment. Um, but generally just helping people surpass their goals like that's why I do it like that's the point of coaching like not meeting their goals because no one other than sort of very mediocre novice strongmen no one has enough self-belief in themselves like some of the strong women I coach are like oh I'd love to pull 100 kilos it's like yes obviously you'll pull 200 kilos yeah. like you're capable of this and seeing people excel and go past what they thought they could do, it's the reason I do it. I, there's no point doing it otherwise. Yeah, I think I think I think I'm totally on board with that. And I think a lot of it is how it can change people's lives and the way they've output their own confidence upon themselves to others. And I think when you've got like quite a good community and you help 
many of people, you start to understand the, the impact you have on their life physically and mentally goes beyond just training. And you start to see people grow as not just a character, but they start to build a little bit of confidence and self-belief. And you start to see them see themselves as not as like an, a professional athlete, but they see themselves as do things that actually love and enjoy. And they start to take like strength training and training and just training in general. It's, you see how much it changes their lives. Um, that's the one thing I love. Obviously, like training people to like compete and stuff, or be it from boxing, mixed martial arts, to strongman, to rugby, whatever. It's phenomenal to see them get better at a sport because you've helped and you've followed things. But it's just anyone at any level who's actually getting better as a person mentally and physically. I think that's the best part about it. And the worst part is people not sticking to the program. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah, that's why I give. Uh strategic weeks off plan for Dale because I can sense when when things wander and stuff Double felt over. it felt really easy today mate so I thought it's like, I'll tell you what we've got nothing coming up just have a week off and do what you want <laughs> he presses a 140 stone because that's normal <laughs> sometimes it is important to have those little sessions that you just go and have fun because yeah, but was this week I'm like I'm like I can't wait to get back on plan because I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think from from the coaching point of view, I I really get a lot out of helping people, particularly the mental side of it. Physical yeah, yeah. is great; it's great seeing people get stronger. But when you see someone that's in a very low, bad mental place, and they they start to kind of come out the other side, and they start having more confidence in themselves, that's a a, a really rewarding feeling and and, and I, something coaching really opened my eyes to is how messed up all of us are yeah you know i used to think i was a complete weirdo and then started coaching strongman and talking to other strong men and women and stuff and i think we've all got so many issues that we go through everyone has their their things that they got to deal with and i think one of my strengths as a coach is listening to to my clients and and trying to make them understand how to kind of start thinking differently and and you know trying to look on the more positive side of life because you know the fact that we can even train is is a blessing really you know yeah. there's people out there that, that that can't do anything and we're, we're in this you know privileged position where we can do the stuff we love and we just got to start kind of building that confidence in ourselves you know i've got i've got one girl that <laughs> she's so scared to compete because she's scared of coming last. I'm like, I've come last before and I've come first before. <laughs> and it really doesn't yeah. matter. You've got, you know, you've got to just put yourself in that position, learn from it, move forward. And it's it's, it, it's amazing the, the different issues that people have, but yeah. seeing people grow mentally is, is, is really rewarding. Obviously it's great when you see athletes winning titles and stuff like that, but just everyone, you know, whether it's my, and, and this is something that a lot of people don't realize the elite level athletes are just as mentally weak as the, as the beginners, you know, the, the yeah, self doubt, the, <laughs> yeah, the questioning themselves that every single person does it. I've done it myself. I'm sure both of you have, you know, that you have those moments where you're like, am I good enough? Am I, should I be doing this? And I think all of us do it. Andrea is a great example of that. I hope she doesn't mind me saying, but she, she's probably one of the hardest people to coach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew's the kind of person I have to let go and have a couple of weeks to just blow off steam yeah. and do what she needs to do because that's, once that's she does it you then you she comes back and she's focused you've got, you've got to learn the athlete and if that's what some people need every now and then then there's nothing wrong with that yeah. you'd rather that than six weeks down the line and go I remember I had a guy before and I was prepping him for a max deadlift at a competition and his numbers were just not budging and I was like mate them numbers are like nothing he went yeah, it must be the uh, kickboxing I done last night. I went, what do you mean the kickboxing? He went, oh, I've been doing it for two months now. Yeah, I've been grappling. So you love it when people don't tell you stuff. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks yeah. for letting me know. I've dropped two stone as well. Oh, brilliant! Uh, I've, yeah. I've had so many clients where That's you're it. building up to peaking for some numbers, and they haven't told you that they've suddenly started to cut. And yeah. they're, they're, I mean, you know, they're eating nothing and they're trying to lift PB numbers. <laughs> it's um. Yeah, having a building a, rep, a relationship with athletes and, and people is, is really important to me when I coach. I, the, the longer and better I get to know you, I, I feel I can get more out of you and give you more 
as a coach. A hundred percent. How long do you think it takes to get to know someone to coach? Because me personally, I think it's took me between six to twelve months to like actually understand someone fully. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I ask for like a minimum three month commitment because if you're not willing, first of all, if you're not willing to commit to training for three months, then you don't need a coach. <laughs> Uh, but also, like, you can just start to unpick bit. Like, three months you can go, oh, maybe. Like, there's little signs of stuff going on. But, yeah, like, a year. Like, it, I've coached Tom for three years now, I think. And I'd say I just about understand most of him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's hard. Like the I, 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 open, I openly tell athletes, you know, that the first month, I'm just learning about you. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. You can't do nothing with someone in the first six weeks or so. because yeah. it's it's like, well, you, you sometimes get someone and they're like, I want you to coach me for this comp. It's in four weeks. I'm like, well, we haven't got a lot we can do in four weeks. We'll make sure you get there and you're not overtrained, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's about as much as we can do. I'm going to have to yeah, interrupt let's go you're for getting it. way behind. So, Frederick Knapp, thank you so much for the super chat. As coaches, who are you training that we might see at a top competition in the next two years? Cheers from the UP. Oh, here we go. Dan Ipkiss straight on. Well, I trained Tom and Luke, if you did. Oh, <laughs> oh do you? Um, <laughs> it's just, well, then, name, name two athletes each that you think um, people will, will be looking, should be looking out for. Um. A, a sort of weird one, and it's tricky. Um, Travis, I think, is gonna. That's a cop out. <laughs> it's people. Have... I train Travis Walkmeyer, <laughs> but people have forgot that he exists. I think, and in the next two, within two years, he'll be at a final at Worlds again. Like that's that's the plan. Um, I've got Dave Rampley, a Welsh guy, just come second in the Welsh today. He dropped two points in an event because he decided to show off and lost by one and a half points. So we'll have a chat about that. Um, but loads of potential. Um, and Shiv, my partner, to be honest, in Strong Woman, I think her first world's strongest woman in five weeks. Um, Are you coming out for that? Hopefully, yeah. We've, uh, I think we've just got our resters back and stuff. So we just booked our tickets. Yeah. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I think she'll make the final this year. Um, I don't think yes, she, she will. thinks she will. She will. Yeah. So she's she looking strong. She's, yeah, she's really, she's like, she's really strong. I think if she makes the final this year, next year she'll be sort of annoying quite a lot of people. So I uh, gave three because you didn't count one of them. <laughs> yeah, if I'm honest with you, um, he's not necessarily a new name to us, but um, Ben Williams. Once Ben can take his gym training on a competition day, Ben is absolutely unbelievable. Like, I've seen Ben train with Andy and Gav and look just, if not as just more impressive. You can even ask him that. He's absolute In training, Ben is phenomenal. But it just struggles mentally to switch on sometimes and focus on a comp day. And I've seen it quite a few times with him. Once that clicks, my tag of a is to be England's strongest man. That's our that's our goal. Obviously, we want more UKs and eventually get to a Giants or whatever. But we want Ben to be England's strongest man, and he will do that yeah. within the next two years, one million percent. Please put a squat in there somewhere so we can show off, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> um and I'm going to have to give you a female and another male because Dan did and I'm not being left out. Uh, Rachel Grayhead, she's two times England's strongest woman under 82 kilos. She's so new and fresh to the sport. It's unbelievable. Like she's even still doing events that she's never tried before. Do you know what I mean? In competitions, she's a phenomenal athlete. She's going to her first Worlds this year. She's going to see what it's all about. This is basically just dipping a toe in the water, but she's going to be a champion for many more years to come. And last but not least, I'm going to go for Lewis Jack because Lewis, the past six Ooh, months compared shout. to what I've seen him before, he listens. And I tell you something: once he takes more on board and he keeps getting fitter, he just needs to be a little bit more stronger, which is a very basic thing we have to work on. I think he's good enough to win Scotland's strongest man, and I also think he's good enough to possibly get to Britain's strongest man. I have no doubt about that as well. Interesting. Good stuff. Two from you, Lassie. 
a guy called Kim Yorax, who is from Greenland. So no one has a clue who he is because he lives in Greenland, where no one... Is it Finland, Iceland? Greenland is sort of um, between Iceland and Canada. Right, okay. Now I know. That was just a general geography question. This guy, when he trains, he sends me his training videos and there's just snow everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's almost impossible for him to train events sometimes, for, certainly for part of the year. Uh, he's unbelievably strong. He just won the log and the, the OSG at Arnold's last week. Oh, um, him. Him over here. Uh, he's a 425 he kilo deadlifter. And I, I think once he starts getting some opportunities to compete against the good, you know, the best guys, he's going to be an absolute beast. He's, he's improved loads in the last two years. And is he a heavyweight, is he? He's a strongman games. Yeah, he's he's a heavyweight, heavyweight yeah. yeah. I he's didn't realise you coached him. He's strong. Over him. He's a strong and he's a lovely guy as well. Just there's a, just It would just be great to give him a few opportunities to, to compete yeah. against some, some other guys. Yeah. And um, I've been training this guy from the very start, Jack Osborne. He's yeah. already got the junior world of. <laughs> yeah. he had long hair. That's what he looks like. <laughs> um, he's more like a fat BG, to be honest. But <laughs> but he's um he's a good lad. He 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 listens, which is not always easy when people are young. And you know, it's it's often when you're good at something. And you you guys will see this. It's, a lot of people will blow smoke up your ass if you start getting good yeah. at something. And he he sort of what I say he takes as gospel which is, is good because you have to bring people a bit more down to earth and make them realize there's still a lot of work to do. But he yeah. realizes that and he's making very solid progress every year. He dominated the junior UKs this year, winning that. His log is unbelievable. Yes. I think, you know, other than the likes of Luke and, and Graham, he could beat anyone at log in the UK. He, he's yeah. good enough to... Um, and he's, he's making progress every single year. He moves well. He's getting fitter, which was something they had to work on. But he's, he's got potential. And it's, I still gonna, it's still going to take him another two years. He's still young, though, isn't he? Yeah. So but he, he's 23 now. Is it, was yeah. this his last year in juniors? Yeah. Yeah. Mental. yeah. Crazy <laughs> strong. There's a number of others I could kind of rattle off, but those two sort of are all But we're infinite. quite far behind, so Sorry. we won't. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to get this wrong. Phil Wantsner Smith. Yeah. In your week off of being coached, this is for you, Dale. In your week off of being coached, you <laughs> calf raises. <laughs> the thing is, what I do is I'm very well known for my uh, calf mass development. So what I do is I've got to have a week off every now and then just to like um, create a little bit of like a deficit in my uh, regime so I don't get too big in the lower <laughs> limbs. <laughs> Well, thank you for that super chat. I don't want to be too athletic. <laughs> um, just a couple of comments I'll read out quickly. Alex Nicholson, one of your Alex, clients, yep. confirming that one of the best things about having you as a coach is your ability to listen and keep him on track mentally. Um, Heidi Forrington says that she gets her ass in the gym for fear of letting you down. <laughs> <laughs> Blue, this is how far behind we are. Come last at least once. It makes you better. Thank you for the super oh, chat. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was... Uh... A that while was a while ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was a super chat also from Heidi. So thank you, Heidi. Sometimes I only end up in the gym for fear of disappointing <laughs> loss. <laughs> ben Millthorpe, um, as I'm just starting in Strongman, at what stage do you guys recommend actually getting a coach? So that's a question to all three of you. I think it's important to get a coach when you know what how clear your goals are. It depends what your goals are because you don't have to compete to get a coach. You can, get, worth, you can get a coach from the start. It's not a bad yeah. thing to do because... You've you, got to think, is it worthwhile you getting a coach? I'll give you an example. When I first started, I wouldn't have listened to absolutely no one because I wanted to learn my own body by watching videos, by reading magazines, and I enjoyed learning myself. Hmm. But if I look, look at it now, if I had done 10 years ago, would I be any better? I'd be a better athlete, but I'd be a really crap coach. You know, but I think getting a coach from the start, there is no right or wrong answer for that. Yeah, at all. it's a weird one because when I started Strongman, there was no coaches, and it was up to me to make a lot of mistakes. And you know, but that those mistakes have probably made me a good coach. Yeah. If I didn't make those mistakes, I probably could have been a, a bit of a better athlete, maybe. Um, but 
you, you got to kind of you, you take the positives out of it. And and anytime you know something's gone wrong, it's made me go away and research things and learn new things and and be open minded to to trying new techniques. Um, so. <laughs> I think there's so much information out there that you, you don't need a coach. Not you know? 100%. Only so much a coach can do for you, though. I think if you're going to take a coach on, you've also got to take on your own. You've got to take on responsibility for your own actions as well. Absolutely. Don't get a coach and think they're going to do everything for you because it's up to you to put the work in. Some, some people do make that mistake as well. They think, right, you know, Dan coaches the world's strongest man. He's going to make Absolutely. me put 50 kilos onto my deadlift this year. Yeah. No. If you've been training for 10 years and, you know, you're a 300 kilo deadlifter, the reality is putting five or 10 kilos on a year is going to be a big goal. You know, it's a big achievement. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes people just, I remember one of my clients, he put 40 kilos on his deadlift on in a year and I was really proud of him. And I put this post up about him and one guy just goes, oh, if I was paying you to coach me, I'd expect to do way more than that. Wow. It's like, well, yeah, that's why you're <laughs> not paying me. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're not lifting that much in the gym as well but um, so, um understanding realistic goals is important train with good people as a beginner like from a coaching point of view it's a pain in the ass having to uncoach people oh. um but train with good people but and if you get a coach like this is why i'm not great at business don't get me for a while like don't get a top level coach like get a coach get a program off starting strongman like do something consistently and so follow a plan a, a show that you enjoy the training yeah because you, you know I, I do see some people and they're like i want to be the world's strongest man but they've not trained yet yeah <laughs> it's enormous as hell training to be a decent strength athlete it's so monotonous it's unbelievable sometimes. i would focus on enjoying training first yeah yeah, yeah if, if you, you enjoy, don't enjoy it, it don't bother just yeah. do lots yeah. of bicycles yeah. and push down we, 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 we all go on about coaching for hours well there's another coaching <laughs> question <laughs> so, and it's blue again thank you blue what is the role of a coach in your opinions oh motivator <laughs> for one because sometimes Getting people to train is the hardest part and getting people to just sort of believe in themselves. You've got to be able to motivate someone. You've got to be able to be a friend to someone. Not just that, you've also got to be able to kind of build a good relationship with someone. A good coach does not see someone as a money pit. They see them as a project. So anytime I train someone new or, for example, someone um, who I've trained for a while and we need to mix things up, Everything's a project and a blueprint. A good coach knows why, where you're heading by doing a certain thing. So a coach just doesn't give you this sort of like training program and have, doesn't have a clue what it's for. A good coach knows why you're doing it, the reasons you're doing it, and they can explain it to you. A good coach is also someone who understands. So don't think that you can train everyone the same. A coach of a high ability can train you with a barbell and a few plates. If a coach needs to make loads of weird, stupid exercises up, the probably is not that good, if I'm honest with you. So there's my role of a coach. Just be a sound guy or girl and just motivate them, get them stronger, make them believe in themselves and just let them enjoy the training, you know? That's a good coach. Yeah, I think um, generally my role is just to deal with all the other shit and allow clients to train as well. So Yeah, but Dan, you also don't put up with any bullshit at all. It's absolutely hilarious. I try not to because it just it wastes everyone's time, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> was it? Was it? Um, your squat is really strong, but your form is fucking trash. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that sounds like something I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, thanks. Like, tell me when comps are, and then I'll deal with everything until the comp. Like, you don't need to. My clients can look at their plan and go, "This is what I'm doing today." I don't want any thought. Like I use RPE or reps in reserve and stuff for accessory work, but in terms of important numbers, clients shouldn't ever have to think. Yeah. Just, what is it? What is it when you do explosive work? Um, jump high as fuck, throw the ball hard as fuck. Yeah. I <laughs> try and keep like it. That, like that's really good. I like that. Simple you, but effective. Deal with the people you're coaching though. <laughs> <laughs> so some people have 
long, eloquent sentences about the benefits of plyometrics and Dale's uh, less complex. Jump further. <laughs> jump. I, need you to, I need you to jump up or jump away. They're the two. <laughs> up yeah. or over there. That's it. Well, the best deadlift advice you ever give me, why don't you just try and stand up with it? Well, because you stopped. You stopped. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you went for a 400 kilo PB and got to the knee and just stopped. I was like, but it's still moving up. You just stopped trying. I said, um, I think it was at Glasgow, uh, sat with Bish and Luke. And I said to Luke, like, it's just stones. All you have to do, go out, lift stones. Like, you know what to do, one by one. Just get them all done. And Bish was like, is this what they pay you for? Because that's not... <laughs> just lift all the stones up. Okay, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, Bish is like, Bish, Bish goes into the fire under a fart to explain things all you can tell, can't you? Yeah. Oh, Bish it's likes to, to really go into it. I say we'll, we'll do 15 more minutes because I'm aware we've still got some questions to get yes, through, haven't yes, we? Yes, we have. And um, you haven't said what you think your role as coach is. Oh, these guys covered it. The only extra thing I'd probably add, um, you become like a, a psychologist as a coach. Um, absolutely. And the other thing I think is important as a coach for, for a lot of people is to actually educate them so they can go and coach themselves. Yeah. yeah. I think making sure, you know, it's not just telling them what to do, but explaining so they can understand why they're doing things and, you know, learning, not just telling, I think is important. Yeah. I mean, some, I some, some, some people, some people do just want to be told, but yeah. I think for a lot of people, it's nice to be right. I'm going to be coached by you for, for, for a little while, for a few years or whatever it might be. And then I'm going to go away and, you know, I've, I've learned what I can. Um, I think sometimes it's, you know, you, you guys like Tom and, and Luke, they don't want to think because they're competing at the absolute elite level. They know how to deadlift. They know how to squat, yeah. you know, that's the psychological thing and, and how to prep for a comp. But when you're dealing with maybe more beginner type people, it's good to just get them to learn why they're doing things and, and how they could structure training for themselves. Well, I think I'm that's warm up and cool down properly. I found it's a very important one for people, you know, it's amazing. I mean, sometimes yeah. because we've been doing it so long, we take things for granted but I'll get people like, well, how do I warm up? <laughs> and, you know, yeah. well, like, because, you know, someone like myself, I might have 300 kilo deadlifts for sets of five or whatever. Some people actually think I just walk into the gym and deadlift 300 kilos for sets of five. You know, but yeah. I, I go through the whole warm up process. You, you lift in 60 kilos, 100 kilos, 140, 180, et cetera, going up through the warm ups. And, you know, sometimes people don't even realize that. Yeah. Yeah. You just, and, I had someone early on before I realised the importance of explaining this, and I put, like, I think that it was, like, 120 for five fives. And they're like, oh, it felt really hard, but, you know, it's cold outside. And I said, well, how did your warm-ups go? And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, oh, okay. I, right, we need to explain yeah. this to everyone. And I think yeah, it's, it's that, important as a coach to to be open-minded about any stupid yeah. questions. You know, yeah, it's only yeah, stupid yeah. If, you, if, if, you, well, if you don't know the answer, you know, it's, it's important to ask. So yeah. 100%. You know, I, try, I try and make sure my clients know they can ask me anything. Yeah, and don't get stressed out with people too quick. Yeah. Don't get angry with people for no reason. Don't get wrong, some people are really... Do push your buttons. <laughs> I, I'm aware that a number of my clients are watching this. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, if someone asks a, asks a genuine question, you can't just go, well, you should know better than that when you should be like, no, you're the trainer, so you explain it to them why is the problem. You know, watched, um, don't be too hot -headed. I watched a podcast with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, who's a physicist and an educator generally and he said he goes into schools and teachers say how bad the children are but none of them say how bad they are mm. and it's a good what good point from like his point of view if you can't explain the fact that we live next to a giant exploding ball of gas all the time and make that interesting you're probably bad at teaching <laughs> like, like if you can't make strongman fun then it's not your client's fault. Yeah. Totally agree. Absolutely. Right. Next few questions. Let's rattle a few off. So um, thank you, Jay, for supporting the channel. Everyone say hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. 
well done <laughs> and then <laughs> Matt <laughs> thank you for the super chat Matt firstly huge fan and glad to see the big trio together what's the best way to train your mind and be mentally strong when training and competing so I'll start this off right when people always ask about mind training I always put this down to very very basic things you've got to imagine that you've already done something for it to become possible that might sound absolutely idiotic to some people but before I even do something, I've already told myself in my mind, I've already done it. And I, I've already done that. I've done it loads of times. I've already been there. It's called visualization. That's a very, very important tool. Everyone's got their own tools. But me personally, visualization is something that is very, very important. You have to believe you can do something for, it to, actually, for you to actually be able to do it. If you don't believe you're going to do it, you'll never be able to do it. You know? So that's one big visualization for me. I think that's a perfect answer. We'll move on. Oh, let um let Dan contribute if okay. he has if he has. Yeah. A, I just <laughs> I think stressed. the key thing is it depends on the person. Um, I've coached some people. Well, when I was coaching Paul Smith uh, before he won a couple of things, the mentality was go into the gym imagining someone else holding your trophy, and that got him switched on. Whereas, like with Dale, it's about your own success. Whereas some people are motivated by the fear of not succeeding. Some people need to visualize some, there's, there's no answer to it. It's just, you'll find your why. And when you find your why, it, it's pretty easy after that. Great. Yeah, now yeah. it's the perfect yeah. answer. Thanks, Liz. There you <laughs> go. Find your why. I was, I was going to add something, but I won't. Oh, <laughs> come on. You can. No, the only thing I was going to add in, in terms of, build, you know, mentally being strong is is actually structuring training really well one of the biggest mistakes i see people doing is trying to max out too often and then they're they're like wondering why they're not lifting things you have to make sure you build on that confidence weekly i would always rather someone walked away thinking that they've got a little bit more next week than going to the point of failure particularly while you're building up towards a show if you if you fail in a competition that's when it's time to go you know balls to the wall and give a hundred percent but building confidence week on week is massively important and if you kind of structure the training right you should find you do think well i did that this week next week's not going to be a problem because it's only a five kilo jump or whatever it might be and that starts to build that mental strength yeah you you start visualizing think well that felt this you know that felt okay this week it's only five kilos more i can do that and that builds that mental strength and Having having a good coach and good structured training definitely helps that side of things. Hundred percent. That's the perfect answer. Yeah, we go. Yes, <laughs> we can all move on and we'll all sleep well tonight. <laughs> Frederick <laughs> Knapp, thank you so much, Frederick. Last one, Elena. I love um, you both and your content. As for coaches, I think I would pick Liz. I think she would be the one to kick my butt. <laughs> Frederick, I could definitely kick your butt, but it, I won't be coaching. <laughs> Depends what you're into. <laughs> like for good night. <laughs> I'd be a terrible coach. So <laughs> I don't know how to even address that, but thank you so much for your super chat. Ben, cheers, lads. Lots to, of good stuff to take away from this. Um, I turn 30 next year. So late comer. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, the goal is to get to Australia's strongest man to start with in a few years' time. Well, go. good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, there's reason to do it. Best luck. Yeah, 30's not old, hopefully. No. Like, yeah, I'm not even 30 yet. Yeah, that's <laughs> that annoys me. Yeah, shut, <laughs> shut up. Shut up, you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm 29. Someone off a call. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And then uh, Blue, awesome to hear from you all. Thank you kindly. Uh, thank you, Blue, for supporting and for everyone else. We are up together. We're up together. Six. So let's let's talk about Britain's strongest man. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 because we, we kind of started and we didn't finish. And I've got a, you know, we've got 10 guys in this contest. You both have two athletes each. Yeah. Give me, give me your Top five. Can I have a slash in mine? No. Because I'll do this. You can't bottle it. Because I'm Luke putting gonna be Tom you slash Luke. Luke. <laughs> no, they're not the there's no, person there's no slash. You've, you've got to, you've got to, if we I, put you on the, on the spot. I think, I honestly don't know. Because it's going to, I think it's going to come down to stones. And Luke's capable of 
being about 18 seconds if he has a really good stone run. Tom's going to win stones if he has a good stone run. So it literally comes down to points between them and who fits in. But then Hixie, Parr, Bish, uh, Andy, or, oh no, Paul Smith, Andy, because I think the dumbbell will get Paul quite a lot of points. Walk on deadlift. You don't have to order all 10 of them. Um, that Dan. was five or six. No, no, no. I, I want to hear his top 10 now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm finding this interesting. So. Oh, for God's sake, Tom Dan, Luke. you're not making it so awkward. I've, I've actually got an idea of the top 10 for a change oh, in my head. I, I actually yeah. can visualise the whole contest. Right, I go think. on then, we'll do top 10. Dan had to do and do I that. Hope none of the athletes are watching this. If you are, go away now. <laughs> this is for you. Uh... We will obviously Andy, be happy if people... Sorry? Andy Black. Yep. Uh, whatever number I got up to, I think six. Um, Shane Flowers, Desmond, and I can't remember who the other two are. Mark Felix. The dumbbell's going to cost him a lot. The deadlift's going to get him a lot. I think Fee will be... He might sneak above Shane Flowers, but he'll be either really near the bottom or annoyingly high up because it's Fee. <laughs> There's no middle ground with Fee. No, it's, oh, <laughs> Felix came second or Felix came ninth. It's <laughs> not. Um, and then I've, I've run out of membering people. <laughs> I think you mentioned everyone at some point. Mm. Yeah. Right. I'm going five because you just stressed me out there. I've got really tight. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go... Tom Stoltman for the win. I'm going to go an on form Graham Hicks in second. Luke Stoltman third. Bishop, Andy Black. There's my top five. Interesting. And the only I've... reason I've got Hicksy so far up is because I've seen him training. Yeah. yeah. Did you put Tom in yeah. third? Yeah. No, he put Tom first. Oh, sorry. Tom first, Hicksy, Luke, um, Bish, and then um, Andy Black. Bish, um, both. No, I know, I know, and I'm, I'm not doing. I'm not. Is absolutely. I, I, I genuinely can't. Th- you look at these events. Bish could not have picked a better set of events. Yeah, no. I, that's just me because Terry's Terry's told me Bishop's definitely winning it as well. I, I, yeah. I honestly like. Mm. I think this is going to be a real battle between Tom and Bish. If Bish has come in in shape and he's rested, I think he can challenge Tom in I this combat. So. You know what, I hate this spot for this reason, right? Because I think I th- I think Luke <laughs> hard, it? Luke and Hixie have a hell of a battle for third place. Yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be one hell of a battle between those two. The problem for Luke is the deadlift. I think the deadlift could cost him yeah. some points. And there's guys like Felix, guys like Shane Flowers, uh, they could potentially beat him. Pa, they're all great deadlifters that could potentially cost him a lot of points. Yeah, um, hopefully, I've done my job right in the last two weeks, and he can. Hey. Get a couple more. It'll be great to see. Trust me. Um, the real battle for me is the next position. Fifth place, I think, is going to be an incredible battle between Paul Smith, Andy, Paro Dwyer. I think those three are going to be battling for for fifth. And yeah, with the events there, Par is very capable. Par is dangerous. dangerous. Par's definitely capable. He's very good at a lot of those events, but so is Paul, and we know how good Andy is at. You know, a number of the events. Well, what I will say is, though, I think where Paul's poor at the deadlift and he's poor at the overhead, Par isn't poor at either. No, I, I agree. Yeah. That makes sense, guys. Yeah, he's not he's got brilliant Paris. at them, but he's, he's not bad. He's just solid. Yeah. Yeah, he is. It's whether, I don't know how to phrase it without sounding like we're hating on athletes. It's whether, is Paul's deadlift worse than Andy's overhead mm. yes like, that's the I'm saying this because I'm Andy's coach yes yeah but well, I, I think I think if we're looking at weaknesses on events Felix and Andy's dumbbell is a big weakness yep totally agree Andy Andy's Andy's overhead like we explained at the start it's just a few years behind that's all I base it down is to it um and the dumbbells are not the nicest shaped things you've ever seen in your life. No. Yeah, don't get me started on them. <laughs> the Atlas stone ones wouldn't like the no, it's, um, it's a new set that's been built as a, as a medley. So it's quite interesting. And I, I think, you know, we talk about the dumbbell for, for someone like Bish. 
I think these dumbbells are going to be good for him because you know Bish is smart. He knows he's got to do three fast. Yeah. I spoke to Palmer about this the other day, and I've said that. I've said three fast, 110 could win it. Yeah. No one, I've, the lads have got similar dumbbells to those, and I don't think anyone's pressing 120. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I think none it's... of the guys are actually amazing at dumbbell either. No, no I think no. the dumbbell might be the deciding. Someone event. like someone like Park could surprise a lot of people. Yeah. And, you I know, just rogue exist. Yeah. Just get rogue dumbbells because they're really good. Mm. And I think it, nice it, to press. You know, if it was log, you say you suddenly go like Hicksy and Luke, one hundred percent. They'll be yeah. Probably. Although Tom's got Tom, half Tom's, the world. Tom's record. logs improved. Mm. You know, but whereas dumbbell, I think Tom can beat any of them. I think. Um, Luke, Bish Luke, could potentially do a presser quick... doesn't help weirdly. No. Yeah, I mean Hicksy was oh. sending me videos of his his dumbbell this week, and it's basically a strict press. Yeah, yeah it's brutal, isn't it? He's you know really strong in it. Like his so, Hicks is so strong, like just <laughs> strong, strong. I, I just oh. I think I think it's such an interesting battle that we've got the current Britain's strongest man versus the world's strongest man versus Europe's strongest man, and there is a chance <laughs> the Britain's strongest man repeats. Yeah, you know, I, I know I'd, you coached two boys, and, and trust me, I'd love to see one of them win it. But we've oh, just no, as a fan. potential of, like, of such a battle happening. And even Hicksy, if, if Hicksy turns up in shape, when Hicks he won Britain's, he was unbelievable at everything. His yoke yep. was just stupidly fast. If he can bring no, that kind of form back, against, uh, Eddie and Eddie's last Britain's strongest man, yeah, yeah. he was brilliant. That, if he can bring that kind of form, yeah, Hicksy is a pain in the ass It'll for anyone. <laughs> It's, um, it's just making sure he gets it right and he's feeling confident in himself. Yeah, I messaged Dale and said, can we just go and get pissed in the crowd instead? Because it's <laughs> going to be the best. <laughs> It'll be the best Britain's strongest man to watch. I am, I'm really excited. It's just going as a fan, I think it's going to be amazing. If anyone yeah. has tickets for it, it's going to be an amazing show. If you haven't got tickets, get them. it's going to be live streamed on uh, the Giants Live Facebook page and on official strongman. So I think there's some guys. tickets left as well. Just cool. to, I don't. There's some, just to put the plug in. We'll and get we'll commission. We will all be there for sure. Yep, I'll yep, be. It's gonna be. We will. <laughs> we will have a party stressed as ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't need to be stressed for this one. You, you guys can be stressed. Hoping I can end a competition not crying in an alleyway somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that's impossible dan it's not gonna happen <laughs> it just right, really well, we... you bought dan well whether your night ends and who knows <laughs> <laughs> do we leave it there yes i think uh two hours in is a good time to <laughs> so i've got a son sorry for... who's an hour late to bed <laughs> yeah sorry for keeping you on for so long guys thank you so much for coming on and chatting it's always great to speak to you both if you haven't already guys make sure you go follow these two gents on instagram two of the best coaches on the planet but two awesome fans of strongman as well the amount of chats me and dale have had about strongman from the past bollocks. watching it's all the bollocks know. all the time i love it yeah <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed it guys we will be back with a lot more strength action soon take care everyone a smile and wave thank you cheers guys wait 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 <laughs> still, still waving how do i end it in the stream there you go that's what i clicked <laughs> yeah. already love it and keep smiling, keep waving. <laughs> Still smiling.